Hi, my name is Nicholas Schulte and I'm a junior biology major at Southwest Baptist University. Today, I will be addressing the immune system response to vaccinations and stress in weaning beef calves. So what is weaning? The traditional method of weaning is the removal of a calf from their mother. This increases the level of stress, which shows by a greater amount of cortisol secretion. This can give an increased behavior alterations which then in turn may depress the immune function and possibly increase the incidence of sickness within the calf. Research has shown that by modifying weaning techniques, overall behavioral impacts can be reduced. One of these modifications is the utilization of a nose flap. A nose flap is a plastic device, as seen in the picture here, that is clamped to the nasal septum of the calf but not piercing it. This will allow the calf to remain with their mother but without nursing. This is shown to decrease stressful behavior responses in the calf and also increase their time spent feeding. Many farmers vaccinate and administer at the time of weaning and husbandry practices that potentially reduce stress may increase the calf response to vaccination. What I hypothesize is that by utilizing weaning methods that reduce stress, this may lead to an increased immune system response to vaccines in the calf. For our methods, at JMK Ranch, there were nine calves ages six to eight months chosen at random and then divided into three groups. One group was set to be the control group, one was set to be the traditional, and the last one was set to be our nose flap group. These were identified by putting ear tags labeled one through nine, and all nine calves had the vaccination administered to them on the day of weaning, which was time equals zero. The weaning methods chosen for this study were as followed, controlled, traditional, and nose flap. Our control group was allowed to remain with their mother after vaccination and continue to nurse until they stopped at their own accord. Our traditional group after vaccination was completely removed from their mother and moved to a foreign area. They also had an orange nose flap placed in their nasal septum so that they could not steal any milk from other nursing mothers. Our last group, which is our focus group here, was our nose flap group. Our nose flap group was allowed to stay with their mother after vaccination. A green nose flap was placed within their nasal septum and they would no longer be able to nurse, but they would stay with their mother, as said before, and this would show minimal stress in the calf and that maternal bond remains overall. The ring was then removed after about two to three weeks, um, and this was true for both the traditional and the nose flap groups. So for days one through 21, at the JMK Ranch, we would individually guide each calf down through a squeeze chute and then we would withdraw the blood from the coccygeal vein. The coccygeal vein on the calf is located underneath their tail. We would then inject the blood into red top tubes and place them in a cooler to allow the blood to clot until we could return to the lab. Once we arrived at the lab, we would then double centrifuge the samples and extract the blood serum from this. Most protocols only call for one round of centrifuging of the samples. However, from pre previous experiments, we have noted that we should probably run two. Once the bl blood serum was extracted, the samples were stored at negative 80 degrees Celsius until all the days were collected. Once all samples were collected, we were then warmed them to room temperature and the ELISA procedure was performed to determine our IgG levels in the serum. Our ELISA plate, as seen in the two pictures here, has 96 wells. We used a 1 to 500,000 dilution of our serum sample, and then we established our calibration curve using our serial dilution. We then allowed the plates to incubate for two hours, and then a conjugate was added, and then the plate incubated for a second time. The ELISA reaction was then stopped, and the absorbance was read at 450 nanometers. You can see this by our ELISA plate reader here. For our results. Before going over what our graph shows here, I'd like to discuss what IgG is. IgG stands for immunoglobulin G. This is a serum antibody that covers over 75% of total serum antibodies. There has been no significant differences found between bovine IgGs and human IgGs. 
An increase in IgG production means that you have a higher functioning immune system, which then has a lower risk of sickness. When looking at our graph here, our x-axis represents the days after vaccination, and our y-axis shows the concentration in grams per liter of IgG in our blood serum. Our scale shows a minimum side of 10 grams per liter with a maximum of 60 grams per liter. Our legend, as found in our top right-hand corner, has our three treatment groups. Our light blue is our control, our green is our nose flap, and our red is our traditional. For the first five days, we see no difference in IgG levels between weaning methods. From day seven to the end of the study, we see significant differences between treatments. There is no statistical difference between our control and our modified nose flap weaning group, but over those same days, we see that traditionally weaned group produced significantly less IgGs. Over all four of those sampling periods, the modified weaning group was significantly great at the P is less than 0.001 than the traditionally weaned group was. In fact, on day 21, the modified weaning group produced over 160% more IgGs than the traditionally weaned group did. To see how stress impacts our IgG levels, we have to look at our cortisol. Cortisol is a primary stress hormone found in blood circulation. Prolonged release of high amounts of cortisol can be seen to have several adverse effects to the body. One of them being decreased IgG production. As we look at our graph here, we also see that our x-axis represents our time after vaccination, while our y-axis is measured in picograms per deciliter for serum cortisol. Within a few days following weaning, we see the traditionally weaned group produce significantly greater amounts of cortisol as marked by our asterisk on day three. Our modified weaned group behaves similarly to our control group throughout the entire process. As we compare our graphs, what we notice is that weaning methods that produce high levels of stress and cortisol also have the lowest level of production of IgGs. This data suggests that the use of modified weaning techniques that reduce stress may maximize a calf's response to vaccination. As you see our graphs compared on both sides here, after day three, with the high increase of cortisol for our traditionally weaned group, our traditional group for our IgG production stays relatively constant for the remaining days. The stress, the IgG production does not go up for the traditionally group and some days becomes depressed. Whereas the low stress level of our control and nose flap group shows a significant increase in production marked by the asterisk on day seven, 10, 14, and 21 on our IgG graph. In conclusion, the utilization of modified weaning techniques that reduce stress may appear to demonstrate improved immune system function. This improves animal welfare by decreasing their incidence of sickness, and this may lead to a decrease in the use of antibiotics amongst farm animals. This will then work to increase the producer's bottom line. Although our IgG results were within the range of reported literature, after further conversation with the supplier, Thermo Fisher, in the future, we will adjust our dilution to a 1 to 100,000 dilution instead of the previously performed 1 to 500,000. We will also be taking our sampling times out to 45 days to see if the traditionally group would have a recovery in their total IgG concentration. Also, we plan to look at specific antibodies regarding respiratory disease amongst cattle in the future. I would like to express my gratitude to my advisor and research professor, Dr. John Murphy, for the use of his cattle and ranch facilities, along with continuously expanding my knowledge and understanding in this field. I would also like to thank the rest of my team members for being so helpful and guiding during our time together. Thank you to Sigma Zeta for not only help fund this project, but also give us a platform to share our findings with. And lastly, I would like to thank Southwest Baptist University for allowing us to use their laboratory facilities and their building. Thank you all. Have a good day.